parasites don't make the cut on most of our favorite creature lists. But maybe that's because we simply don't know the crucial and surprising roles they play in the ecosystems all around us. These endangered Japanese trout rely on an unlikely ally to survive. Tiny parasitic worms that need to make their way from land to water in order to mate. To get there, the worm infects crickets and prompts them to fling themselves into streams. The sacrifice delivers the worm to water, and the unlucky crickets provide up to 60% of the endangered fish's food supply. Parasites like this one may be critical to the functioning of many ecosystems, but they have historically been left out of the maps scientists create to help understand the flow of energy through a habitat. Ecologists have built hundreds of food webs, and they haven't put parasites in them. And what we've lost from that is the ability to even think about parasites and the role in ecology. Take the African savanna, where almost any child will tell you, lions are king. Normally you think the lions are untouchable, but in fact they have all these ticks and fleas and protozoans, 31 species of tapeworms and nematodes and trematodes, and on and on. And in fact, there's more things eating lions than things that lions eat. Though we rarely see them, parasites may make up as many as half of all known species. The roles they play are not always what you'd expect. In the salt marshes of Southern California, for example, a trematode worm moves from one host to another as it develops, living in snails as larvae and reproducing only in the gut of shorebirds. It makes the transition through an unusual route, the brain of a fish. Fish with parasites on the brain are more likely to flash their silvery bellies toward the sky, a beacon to hungry birds overhead. The result? Infected fish are up to 30 times more likely to get caught, delivering the parasite to its final avian home. Parasites may regulate population numbers by feeding on their host species and competing with others for food. In the few cases where parasites have been added to food webs, the enhanced complexity is obvious. This is a food web that we constructed for Estera de Punta Banda, which is an estuary in Baja, California, Mexico. Here, each ball represents a species, and each gray line connects a consumer to the species that it eats. The species down at the bottom are the plants, and they're in green, and then all the free-living animals are in red. We can also see that there are trophic levels, so we can go from plants up to herbivores and then to different levels of predation as we move from the bottom to the top. The next step then is to add parasites and see what changes. You can see that food web is a lot taller now with the parasites because of the additional trophic levels that parasites provide. As scientists work to understand how parasites fit into ecology, some have even begun to talk about parasite conservation, arguing that losing certain parasites might have ramifications we are just beginning to understand. Some parasites even benefit humans directly. If you're into eating organic food, you can thank uh, lots of parasites that take out some of the insect pests that reduce crop yield. And we use those instead of pesticides, arguably, to our better health. Parasites may also be worth preserving because they're just really cool. We may never love the 9-meter worm that infects sperm whales as much as we love its host, but you can't deny that it's an impressive specimen. And it's hard not to be left speechless by the marine louse that gobbles up a fish's tongue only to replace the organ with its own body. A lot of them are just fascinating examples of evolutionary strategies, some of which are sort of, uh, you know, disgusting perhaps, but uh, certainly sinister and, and fascinating all the same.